okay so sliding filament mechanism is the mechanism by which the contraction of the skeletal muscle happen and why it is called as sliding filament mechanism the reason is the muscle contraction occurs because myosin heads attach to and walk along the thin filaments at both ends of the sarcomere progressively pulling the thin filament towards the M line okay so as the thick filament as the thick filament it uh, as the thick filament it walks uh, along the thin filament that's why it is called as sliding filament mechanism okay so just wait a second okay so it means that the thick filament this is the thick filament thick filament and this is thin filament okay so the thick filament it slides over the thin filament okay so when i say slide over the thin filament you will understand it in more clarity when we will actually see the video related to this okay so as a result thin filament slide inwards and meet at the center of the sarcomere if you remember the structure of sarcomere it is this these are the thin filament and this is the thick filament okay so as per the description of it what we are saying that the thin filaments slide inwards and meet at the center of the sarcomere which is the center of the sarcomere it is the m line okay so these thin filaments they slide inwards okay so when they will slide inwards it may happen that this thin filament it will slide over this thin filament so something like this you will see okay so they will slide inwards and and they will meet at the center of the sarcomere okay so they may move so far inward that their ends overlap so that's what i said so the ends of this thin filament it is also possible as that the ends of this thin filament it may overlap with the thin uh, the other thin filament okay so as the thin filament slide inward the z disc come closer together so if moment of slide uh, thin filament is in this direction i will just uh, one second so i will again draw okay so if movement of the thin filament is in this direction this thin filament is moving in this direction this thin filament will move in this direction at a certain point these two thin filaments they will overlap each other you should not uh, be worried about this point of slide filament crashing with this uh, this point it it never happens this point will go under or this point will go under this filament okay so so a overlap between two uh, thin filaments will happen over here and this z disk as the movement is happening towards the center this z disk will come closer instead of this position it will come closer because of sliding of the thin filaments okay so the length of individual thick and thin filaments do not change so there is no change in the length of the individual thick and thin filament they will remain constant okay so the shortening of the sarcomere will give rise to the sarc a shortening of the whole muscle fiber 
and this will in turn will lead to the shortening of the entire muscle and when the shortening of the entire muscle takes place we call it we call it as shortening this uh, sliding of the thin filaments over each other will lead to the shortening of the sarcomere and this shortening of the sarcomere in turn will lead to the shortening of the whole muscle fibers and this shortening of the whole muscle fiber in turn will lead to the shortening of the entire muscle and when this happen shortening of the entire muscle we can say that it is contraction of skeletal muscle okay so basically sliding filament mechanism it is related to the contraction okay so when we will study the uh, the sliding filament mechanism it basically has two parts that is first part is the contraction cycle and the second part is second part is excitation contraction coupling okay so if question appears on the sliding filament mechanism then you have to uh, explain both of these parts that is contraction cycle as well as the excitation contraction coupling so contraction cycle means what we we are this is actually the next step of the whatever events that take place at the neuromuscular junction okay so in neuromuscular junction we have stopped till the point where the calcium is released into the sarcoplasm and we have uh, concluded by saying that once the calcium is released into the sarcoplasm it then uh, causes the muscle to contract but uh, how that release of calcium is connected to the contraction of the muscle is what is the contraction cycle is okay so on onset of contraction happens when the sarcoplasmic reticulum releases calcium ions into the sarcoplasm okay so we have already seen this part in the neuromuscular junction events so this sarcoplasmic reticulum release of calcium ions it is because of map that is muscle action potential which is generated into the motor end plate and this muscle action potential it is because of the nerve action potential which arises into the nerve that innervates this motor end plate okay so this muscle action potential travels to t tubule from t tubule it gets into the terminal cisterns and from terminal cisterns it then travels to the sarcoplasmic reticulum and this sarcoplasmic reticulum then releases the calcium ions into the sarcoplasm okay so once this calcium ion gets into the sarcoplasm what happens next is that this calcium binds to the troponin we have already seen what is troponin troponin is a regulatory protein we have also seen the structure of troponin troponin has calcium binding site on it okay so this troponin is in conjunction with the tropomyosin conjunction means with is in contact with the tropomyosin so tropomyosin is also another type of regulatory protein okay so when this calcium binds to the troponin troponin changes its shape and this moves the tropomyosin away away from the myosin binding sites which are present on the actin okay so when this happens that is uh, moving away the tropomyosin from the myosin binding sites of actin these binding sites are are free or they become exposed and once these sites become exposed the actual contraction cycle begins so what is necessary for the contraction cycle to begin is the 
रिलीज ऑफ कैल्शियम फ्रॉम द सार्कोप्लाज्मिक रेटिकुलम एंड कैल्शियम नीड्स टू बाइंड टू द ट्रोपोनिन देन ट्रोपोनिन शुड चेंज इट्स शेप एंड दिस चेंज इट शेप शुड मूव अवे द ट्रोपो मायोसिन फ्रॉम द बाइंडिंग साइट एंड द मायोसिन बाइंडिंग साइट्स ऑन द एक्टिन दे शुड बी फ्री और एक्सपोज टू द मायोसिन विच इज पार्ट ऑफ थिक फिलामेंट ओके सो वंस दिस मायोसिन बाइंडिंग साइट ऑफ एक्टिन बिकम फ्री इट लीड्स टू कॉन्ट्रेक्शन साइकल सो देर आर फोर स्टेप्स ऑफ कॉन्ट्रेक्शन साइकल फर्स्ट स्टेप इज ए टी पी हाइड्रोलिस हाइड्रोलिसिस मीन्स इट इज ब्रेक डाउन ओके सो ए टी पी हाइड्रोलिसिस और ब्रेक डाउन ऑफ ए टी पी सो वेन ए टी पी ए टी पी इज एडिनोसिंग ट्राईफॉस्फेट सो ट्राईफॉस्फेट वन फॉस्फेट विल बी रिमूव फ्रॉम द मोलिक्यूल सो इट विल बिकम ए डी पी प्लस फॉस्फेट सो दिस फॉस्फेट इट इज लाइक Pro, it provides the energy. Okay, to whom it provides the energy to the myosin. Okay, so second step is attachment of myosin to actin to form cross bridges. So myosin, in absence of this phosphate group, is in a relaxed state. But when this uh, phosphate group binds to the myosin. myosin head gets uh, energized and it binds to the actin which has free myosin binding sites on it due to removal of tropomyosin from its binding site so once this myosin heads bind to the myosin binding sites of the actin they form cross bridges okay so once cross bridge is getting formed third step is power stroke so you understand by what is power stroke okay so then fourth step is detachment of myosin from the actin so once power stroke happens the myosin detaches from the actin okay so we will see in detail each and every step so the first step is once the myosin please understand all of these steps will happen only and only when the myosin binding sites of the actin they get free okay so first step is the atp hydrolysis so myosin head includes atp binding site and the an enzyme which is known as atpase enzyme which hydrolyzes atp into adp plus phosphate group so where this enzyme is present on the myosin head okay so atp binds to the site on the myosin head which has the enzymic activity that is atpase activity which breaks down atp into adp plus phosphate so we can write this into one chemical reaction format that is atp in presence of atpase give rise to adp plus phosphate okay so this hydrolysis reaction reorients and energizes the myosin head that's what i said so when this phosphate group it is released from the atp by action of atpase this phosphate group is responsible for the reorientation and the it provides the energy to the myosin head okay so now the myosin head have reoriented and energized the next step is this energized and reoriented myosin head binds to the myosin binding site on the actin to form cross bridges so the energized myosin head attaches to myosin binding site on actin and releases previously hydrolyzed phosphate group 
okay so this is important so once this energized myosin head binds to the myosin binding site of actin whatever a phosphate group that has lead to the uh, that has lead to the reorientation and energizing of the myosin head it leaves or it gets released okay so the uh, main thing of or main point of this uh, second step of the sliding filament mechanism or contraction cycle is that release of phosphate okay first thing is this that is formation of cross group second thing is the release of phosphate so these two things must come in your answer okay so the binding of myosin heads to actin during contraction is referred to as cross bridge okay so next step is power stroke so once cross bridge is formed next step it gives rise to power stroke so during power stroke the site on cross bridge where adp is still bound opens up okay so it is now exposed the site on the cross bridge where the adp is bound is exposed so as a result cross bridge rotates and releases adp so second important thing in the third step is a release of adp in second step there is a release of phosphate in third step there is a release of adp by rotation by means of rotation of cross bridge okay so the cross bridge generates force as it rotates towards the center of the sarcomere sliding the thin filament past the thick filament towards the end band so this power stroke it means to move the thin filament past the thick filament towards the end line so earlier when the power stroke happens if it is the condition before power stroke then after power stroke this z disk it moves towards the central line okay so this is the thick filament and this thin filament it slides over the thick filament and moves towards the m line okay so when we will see the video related to this you will understand it more clearly okay so it is not three it is fourth point okay fourth step is detachment of the myosin from the actin okay so at the end of power stroke cross bridge remains firmly attached to actin until it binds another molecule of atp okay so once the power stroke ends cross bridge remains as it is okay so it will only be removed the myosin head which has bound to the myosin binding site of the actin it will be only be removed when the new molecule of atp occupies the atp binding site of the myosin head once atp binds to that particular binding site the myosin head will come back to its original position and again the process will repeat the atp will get hydrolyzed into adp plus phosphate then the myosin head will bind to the myosin binding site of actin then power stroke will happen and again new atp will bind okay so this will continue till the sliding happens okay so let's see these are the steps <clears throat> so uh, first step which is shown over here it is myosin cross bridge so this is the tail of the myosin these are the heads of the myosin and it shows the adp plus phosphate which is really okay so this head will bind with the myosin binding sites of the actin okay so in this second step it is the power stroke so this uh, myosin head will move forward move in this direction 
releasing the adp plus phosphate and thus the movement of the thin filament will happen in this direction towards the m line okay so once after power stock ends new atp molecule will bind to the myosin head where the the atp binding site is there and this cross bridge it will come back to the or the myosin head which have formed the cross bridge it will come back to the normal position so again this atp will get hydrolyzed into atp plus phosphate and this will reorient and re-energize this myosin head and will again bind to the myosin binding site and again the process will repeat okay so let's see it in gi format so you can see the calcium binding to the troponin and the tropomycin they are moving away from its side so you can see this is the uh, calcium this is the troponin and this is the tropomycin okay you can see actin molecules on which troponin are present tropomycin they have moved away and the binding site are exposed the myosin heads they have bound to the binding site and this is the power stock okay so when these move in this direction this myosin heads move in this direction this is nothing but the power stock so when they move in this direction another atp molecule binds over it and they come back to the normal position okay so you can see over here the c adp plus phosphate when bound power stroke happens okay new atp binds it comes back to the normal position okay so this is the cross bridge which is shown over here when the myosin heads bind to the you can see this is the uh, thin filament this is the thin filament okay so towards this is the m line m line okay so this thin filament because of the formation of cross bridge and further by the power stroke further by power stroke this thin filament is being moved towards the m line okay and this will continue till the contraction will happen and as the thin filament is bind to the uh, z disc on both the sides so z disc from this side and z disc from this side they will come closer to each other due to this continuous movement and when this thin filament when they overlap each other this z disc distance between z disc it is removed or it is uh, it gets less okay so this is uh, first part of sliding filament mechanism that is the contraction cycle okay second one second part of the uh, sliding filament mechanism is the excitation contraction coupling so excitation contraction coupling means what we are connecting excitation that happens in the muscle with the contraction okay excitation of muscle means what it is we are actually connecting the events of the neuromuscular junction with the contraction cycle so the point where the muscle action potential get generated in the muscle we are trying to connect it with the contraction that happens in the muscle okay so there are two conditions that is when the muscle fiber is relaxed and when the muscle fiber is contracted okay so when muscle fiber is relaxed what happens that concentration of calcium in the sarcoplasm is low than it is in the sarcoplasmic reticulum okay so muscle action potential propagates through sarcolemma 
and the T tubules and it causes calcium release channel in the sarcoplasmic reticulum to open okay calcium flows out of the sarcoplasmic reticulum into the sarcoplasm and released into vicinity of thick and thin filament so when calcium binds to the troponin it changes its shape and this conformational change causes tropomyosin move, move away from the myosin binding site on actin so once these sites are free myosin head binds to them to form cross bridges and contraction cycle begins okay so these events as they connect excitation to contraction hence are called as excitation contraction coupling okay so what we have exactly said over here i'll just tick blank blank screen that first of all the muscle action potential is generated okay so this muscle action potential which is generated it causes or it uh, it is generated in sarcolemma okay it is generated in sarcolemma so from sarcolemma it goes into the t tubules okay from t tubules it then propagates into the sarcoplasmic reticulum okay so once in sarcoplasmic reticulum it causes a release of calcium where in sarcoplasm okay so this release calcium then interacts with troponin okay so once it interacts with troponin this troponin changes its shape and causes tropomyosin to move away from myosin binding sites okay so this tropomyosin once it moves away from the myosin binding site it leads to binding of myosin heads to actin okay so once this myosin heads bind to the actin it leads to contraction okay so as this process connects excitation muscle generation of muscle action potential it essentially means where the muscle is getting excited okay so this excitation we are connecting with the contraction that's why this process is called as excitation contraction coupling okay so that's why this step is known as excitation contraction coupling okay so now we'll move back to the normal step okay so now sarcoplasmic reticulum membrane also contain calcium active transport pump which utilizes energy in form of atp okay so during continuous muscle action potential propagation through t tubules the calcium release channels are open okay so it means efflux is more than influx so we will explain on the blank screen what is this after last action potential propagation the calcium release channels they are closed so calcium moves back into the sarcoplasmic reticulum via calcium active pumps okay so this concentration of calcium in the sarcoplasm reduces inside the sarcoplasmic reticulum molecule of calcium binds 
with a protein called as calcitriptin which binds to the calcium and thus enabling even more calcium to be sequestered or stored within essa so calcium level in the sarcoplasm drops tropomyosin covers the myosin binding site and the muscle fiber relax okay so now we will see exactly what we are saying over here okay so this is the structure suppose this is sarcoplasmic reticulum okay so it has two types of channels first is the calcium release channels release channels and second one is calcium pump okay so movement of calcium release channels calcium inside the sarcoplasmic reticulum so this calcium through the calcium release channel the movement is from inside the sarcoplasmic reticulum to the outside is the sarcoplasm okay so calcium release channels they move or they allow movement of the calcium from the sarcoplasmic reticulum to the sarcoplasm at that particular point of time this calcium pumps they are not at work okay so this pump the action of this calcium release channel it will be maximum when there is presence of map that is muscle action potential if muscle action potential is there this calcium release channels they will work at the maximum capacity at that time this calcium pumps they won't be working okay but once this muscle action potential generation or propagation stops then that time this calcium release channels its activity it will its activity it will decrease okay so when this muscle action potential i will just draw over here muscle action potential generation when it is decrease then it will cause decrease in the activity of the calcium release channels okay so at that time the activity of the calcium pump it will increase okay so whatever calcium which is there in the sarcoplasm it will start moving inside the sarcoplasmic reticulum okay so once this calcium moves inside the sarcoplasmic reticulum there is a protein called as calcitriptin it will sequester or sequester or alternatively we can say it will form a complex with the calcium so calcium calcitriptin a complex will form and this will allow the sarcoplasmic reticulum to store more and more and more calcium in it okay so please understand this one thing and as this sarcoplasmic reticulum can store more and more calcium inside it sorry for that one second so as this sarcoplasmic reticulum can store more and more calcium in it calcium the amount of calcium in sarcoplasm it will decrease okay so as amount of calcium in sarcoplasm decreases the troponin regains 
its normal shape okay so as a troponin regains its normal shape the tropomyosin tropomyosin will cover the myosin binding sites on the actin and as the myosin binding sites on actin they are covered the contraction cycle stops okay so this is excitation contraction coupling and with this we have finished the sliding filament mechanism filament mechanism which is in two parts that is contraction cycle and the excitation contraction coupling okay so understood this part this is a very easy part if you see then it won't be very difficult to understand this you have to just go through it once okay one sure short question will be there on this that is a neuromuscular junction and the uh, sliding filament mechanism both of these points they are very much important in exam point of view okay so